Hello, sweet friends. It is Friday, and you have um, done a whole nother week of Bible lessons. So how awesome is that? All right, so today we have a story about Elijah. This is a story that you might have heard before, or maybe you haven't. And so we're gonna um, we're gonna talk about the new story. Before we do that, let's sing our Bible song. Let's do our little um, chant, and let's do our scripture. So here we go. Um, the B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, Bible. Great job, guys. All right, I've got my book. Let's say it together, ready? Absolutely true, absolutely true. Everything the Bible says is absolutely true. Very good. Do you remember that our scripture that we're learning is from the book of Psalm? And it's in chapter 9, and it's verses 1 and 2. So let's say that together. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Let's do that one again. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonder. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Psalm 9, verses 1 and 2. Awesome job, guys. Okay, so our scripture today, or our story today, is from the book of 1 Kings. And it's um, chapter 18, and it's several verses in that chapter, all right? And it's about Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Okay, so there were two people, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, who were not good leaders. They did not believe in God. They believed in false gods. So false gods are gods that they believed in, but they weren't the true God that we believe in. God had become upset with them and had caused a famine and a drought which means there was little food and there was very little water. Elijah was one of the last prophets of the true God that was still alive. God spoke to Elijah and told him to go visit King Ahab. Elijah told Ahab that it was time for the rain soon. Elijah told Ahab to meet him on the, town, on the top of Mount Carmel. All the people of Israel... The 450 prophets of Baal, <laughs> puppy dog wants to join us today, and the 400 prophets of Asherah were to meet them on the top of Mount Carmel. Okay, so it's a mountain that Elijah told him they were going to go meet, up, meet, okay? So remember, Elijah is the one true prophet of God, and then the prophets of Baal and of Asherah, they had like over 800 of them. So there are lots of those prophets even though they're not, um, they weren't worshiping the true God. Elijah was upset that the people were choosing to worship the false gods of Baal and Asherah. Okay, so do you see that? That's like an, an idol. It's one of the idols that they worshiped, okay? And it just means they praise that instead of praising our true God. So Elijah said, how long will you go back and forth between worshiping the true God of Israel and worshiping the false gods of Baal and Asherah? I am only one prophet of the true God, but Baal has 450 prophets. Elijah and the prophets of Baal each had an altar. They were to place the bull and sticks on the altar. Okay, do you see this little altar? So that's what they were going to do. They were going to place... Um, their offerings onto the altar, all right? They could not set fire to the altar, though. They were to pray and ask their God to send fire down from heaven. Okay, so this is going to be the test. The God that set the fire was the true God that the people of Israel should worship. So the prophets of Baal went first. The 450 prophets yelled and called out to Baal until lunchtime. At lunchtime, Elijah began mocking them. He was making fun of them, saying, Shout louder! Maybe they can't hear you! Maybe he's asleep or away on a trip! The prophets stomped around and shouted louder. They yelled and stomped. Look how angry they look. 
They yelled and stomped around, asking for Baal to answer them until the evening. So they had done this all day long. So that's a long time of calling to their gods to say, please send us fire so we can prove that you're real. But they still had no answer. Then Elijah, who remembers the only true prophet of the true God, of our true God, called the people to come over to him. He built the altar out of 12 stones. Okay, so he built an altar too. He then dug a trench around the outside of the altar, which means he dug basically just a little um, pit around the outside of the altar. Okay, he then prepared or dug just dug out a little bit around the edge of the altar. Okay, he then prepared the sacrifice and the sticks on top of the altar. He then told the people to fill two large jugs of water and to pour all of that water onto the altar, onto the bull that they were sacrificing, and onto the wood. Now, if he said, pour water onto this, which would then make the wood all wet, can you burn wet wood in a fire? No, when your firewood is wet, it won't burn because the water won't let it burn. So Elijah's saying, pour all this water onto the fire, onto where we want the fire to do it, because he was going to prove something, okay? So they poured the water onto the altar two more times, okay? So not just once, but two times they did that. The water ran over the altar and down into the trench that he had built around it. Elijah walked up to the altar and he prayed. Elijah asked God to answer him. And immediately, guess what happened? Fire burned down onto the altar. It burned all the offering, all the wood, all the stones, and the dust. It burned everything. Okay, so look. He's got this altar right here. It's got their wood. It's got their bull that they were sacrificed to him. All of it immediately burns up. Completely gone. The fire even licked up the water that was in the trench. So it burned all of it and even all the water that was in the trench around it. And when the people saw this, they fell down and began to worship the true God. Why? Because they saw that the true God was the only one that worshipped. Or, I'm sorry, the true God was the only one that answered all day long. You know, all those other prophets of Baal and Asherah, they... They called to their God all day long. And did their God ever answer? No, because that wasn't a true God. But our true God answered Elijah. And he showed, he proved who he was. Even though all that water had been poured on, he proved that he was the real and true God. God showed the people of Israel that he was the true and living God. We worship an amazing God that is powerful and loving. He's so powerful, he can do incredible things. And yet he loves us no matter what. Okay, so that's our lesson today. And I hope that you've learned that God is powerful and God can do incredible, amazing things. Now, your job or your craft is a little bit different today. I gave you a sheet of paper that says, I want you to write a letter to God. Okay? Um, and what you're going to do is, if you can't write your words, you can tell your mom and dad words, or you can just draw God a picture. But I want you to thank him for something good that has happened in your life this week. Okay? So draw a picture or write words about something that good that has happened. You know, Elijah had, God proved how good and powerful he was. And God is good and powerful in our lives too. And I want you to remember that. So write him a letter, draw him a picture. One of those things. All right, I'll see you next week.